twist, as mentioned in the bio. Um, Sonya Puzzle, Sam and I, we co-host a show in Houston, Texas called Your Talk Time TV. It is currently airing on, what, 17 and 99? In Houston, Texas. And we thought it was really cool since we'll be in the presence of people who do business uh, who may not be from the Houston area that we can feature them. And we're gonna run it like one of our talk shows and, and air it to just give Ms. Kendra Ward and Ms. Therese Gamble some, some traction in another place. Yeah. Clap it on up. That's what you call being resourceful. Yeah, looking out for other people. So we're running the, we're rolling the tape, we're gonna get started, and we're gonna ask questions in the process. We want you, we wanna invite you guys to ask questions about business. So you guys, are you ready? Yes. Ready, ready. Welcome to today's episode of Your Talk Time TV with Lindsay Bivens. And Sonia Pilton Sam. And we are excited today to bring you two amazing guests. We have Miss Therese Gamble. Hi, everyone. And Pierre Ward. We're gonna just run that one more time. We're working with two microphones, so we'll start over, we'll do that intro really quick, and then we'll run into asking questions after that introduction. Yeah. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Your Talk Time with Lindsay Bivens and... And we're so excited to showcase two amazing business owners from the Florida area. We have Therese Gambo <laughs> and Kiana Ward. <laughs> so we're going to keep it candid again because we are on location with the, today's show and we have an audience full of people to ask questions. And what better thing to do to bring seasoned business owners uh, and answer some of those tough questions, right? So I'm going to pass the microphone and we'll get started with questions. you start business? Tell us a little bit about your business and why you started it. My name is Keandra Ward. I am the president of Keystone Business Institute. We are a school in Tampa, Florida hybrid for entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs have the opportunity to get their master's or bachelor's in entrepreneurship. Why did I start business? I actually started uh, working in the hair salon when I was 14, so I have already been integrated in business. I did try to go to corporate for a little bit, and then when I had to clock out for lunch and clock back in, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. Exactly. it didn't quite work. But I also understand that there is power when you hold the power, and to be able to help others get that same. Greetings, everybody. My name is Teresa Gamma. I'm a native of Jacksonville, Florida. My business is Concierge Resource Professional Consultant, DBA CRPC Consultant, where we are a strategic consulting agency that help entrepreneurs from an idea to when you're ready to retire and sell your business. We focus on your best practices and operation development processes. We especially is teaching you how to pitch your business for funding. And then we have a matchmaking vendor resources where if we don't have the resource, we will connect you to the expert that does. Not a phone number, not an email, not a website, an actual person. So our goal this year is to help entrepreneurs build the confidence to pitch your business and win that two million and three million and five million dollars y'all hear about and hear see on TV. You all can have it too. Does everybody in here know about pitching? Pitching is an awesome thing, so I want her to really just home in and tell you about pitching because I think a lot of small businesses and startups miss the pitching process. And this is free money, and I think that you all, got, you guys are really missing that, so I'm gonna explain. Thank you, Sonia. Lindsay touched on it a little bit earlier when she was talking about the value proposition. 
A lot of us know that as your mission statement or your 30 second elevator speech. Forget all that 30 second elevator speech. Just forget it. Just like Lucas said earlier, just forget it. You have, to, you have to be able to tell people who you are, what you do, what value you bring with your products and services, what salute, what problem you're trying to solve, and if you have a track record, to be able to you know, mention your track record. And then you got to have an ass. You can tell people all day long what you do. You can demonstrate it every day. We good at working in our business, but we fail at talking about our business. So I've been following a lot of um, David Beckett in Germany. For those of you that's on social media, he does the Pitch Academy. He has helped over 8,000 entrepreneurs master the art of pitching. So my dream is to go to Germany where he is, like Lindsay and learn, and I want to come back, not to Jacksonville, but to the United States, to be the pitch queen. I want to be able to teach I'm not an entrepreneur how to pitch, get that money, because see, when y'all successful, then I'm successful. I'm going to be chasing the dream, and the money going to chase me. That's the mindset we have to have. Dr. Um, Adrian Gentry talked about that earlier, about your mindset. So we got to deal with confidence. When I'm shy, I don't like talking. And I'm gonna put him on the spot because he I has been working with him behind the scene, Andrews Mackey of Chief Mackey of ADA Global. He is one of the, we've been knowing each other for five or six years. And I have been helping him behind the scenes with pitching and building that confidence. He told y'all the truth, he was nervous, but y'all couldn't tell him. And I am so proud of him today because from his pitch from February until now, it is totally different. He's not, you know, defensive. Sometimes we pitch, we so harsh, like we yelling at people. You better back for me. If you don't give me no money, I ain't, you, you know, we, we, I'm pushing. You can't talk at the people. You have to talk to them. And that's what he did today. So I got to give him kudos today. He really has improved. So with that being said, with the pitching, I wanted to do more. So I had planned a year ago to put on a pitch competition for specifically minority entrepreneurs. So I said, Lord, I need a platform. I need a partnership. I can't do this by myself the way you're giving it to me. So I'm, I have a relationship with the Microsoft store here in Jacksonville. And I go up there all the time. The store manager knows me. So the community director said, Teresa, we want to do something for minority entrepreneurs in Northeast Florida and Southeast Georgia. So she said, well, what can we do? I said, we can do a pitch contest. She said, huh? I said, we can do a pitch contest. She said, well, email me the details. Y'all already had the plan written a year ago. I just went back and tweaked it a little bit. Before she got off work at 4.30, she had the whole run of show, how it was gonna go, and the platform. And they did business in their store. So February the 24th of this year, I had that pitch competition, y'all. Uh, Southeast Georgia looked at the event. This is what um, Sonia was talking about. They looked at it. 60 people registered. 40 pitched. Now, I'm going to tell you what happened. They got scared. Mm -hmm. That's when I knew it was a confidence issue. Mm -hmm. They liked what they saw. They got to be able to pitch in front of Microsoft. Mind you, this event was live stream where Bill Gates was watching it from where he wow. operates from. Because they had to get it approved from him before I can even do it. So I'm saying this, I don't care how small the pitch contest is, even in your church, if you can get up in church and do church announcements, y'all can pitch y'all business. If you can get up in church and you can, I got a testimony, you can pitch your business. Don't, don't I can't, this is not in my vocabulary because we leaving too much money on the table, y'all. We leave that money on the table. I got a recent testimony, young mama, single mom, divorcee. She do jams and jellies and pickles, blueberry lemonade pickles. Y'all don't, don't, don't knock it till you try. It was good. And now she dipping them in chocolate. Lord, help her. So we was in the break room and she was sharing her product with us. So the director of the Wells Fargo Community Learning Center was coming through the kitchen, you know, checking everything out. I said, hey, Miss May, won't you come try um, Yolanda um, jams and jelly? She had them on banana wafers, all nice. She ate about two or three of them, went around and did something else, came back and ate some more. She said, hey, I need you to come to my office. We got two events coming up. I need you to. She got it on the spot because I made her pitch. We did a Facebook Live. 
She got two contracts right there. Now, what if she wouldn't have been doing, if I wouldn't have had her pitching, if I wouldn't have had her talking to me? Y'all got to get yourself out the way. Stop saying, I ain't got this. I ain't ready for that. I need to have all this. Do and use what you got. And God will add the increase. So I'm going to give you a book by David Beckett to read. I just ordered it from him. He just wrote it. It's called Pitch to Win. It's a black and green cover. It's on Amazon. He also had one called The Three Minute Pitch. Anatomy for doing a pitch instead of elevated speech. 90 seconds. One minute, 34 seconds. 231 words. That's what your pitch needs to consist of. You need to say who you are, what value you bring, what services you offer, and how you use them, and what's your ass. Please don't forget your ass. Because it's other than that, you're just having a conversation. All right, we're gonna stop right there because this is what I think what we miss it is just like in class, we have to let people kind of hear and see what it sounds like. I'm Bill Gates today. How about that today? And so you need to pitch to me, you need to let me have it so I can say something about a word, sister. You got to come ready. You got to come ready to see me down low because I got about three, four different pitches. Let me see, let me do this. Give me your best one because I'm hard. Let me do this. Because so you know you got to have more than one in your arsenal, right? Because you need different things for your business, right? Okay, here we go. I have two questions for each of you today. Do you have workloads that has reached this peak in your business? Or do you have lack knowledge, skill, or bandwidth in a particular area with you and your team? If you answer yes to one of both of these questions, guess what? CRPC Consultant has the answer just for you. I'm Teresa Gamble. I'm the founder and CEO of CRPC Consultant Headquarters right here in Jacksonville. We also now in Southeast Georgia, where our mission is to provide value to entrepreneurs and strategic consulting and best practices and operation development processes, mastering the art of pitching your business concept, vendor matchmaking resources to create and repair your business processes. So what we our goal is is to help entrepreneurs take the complexity out things do on your own, but to build, to work you through the process where you're creating sustainable revenue streams. Now, are you tired of underestimating your complex level of thinking? Are you ready to take the next level in your business? Then I need you to take your pen and your pen out. I need you to write this number down, 904-235-6672, and contact me so we can book appointment next week so we can get you started. Woo! Thank you. It took some work to get it done, because I do a lot. This does not happen overnight, y'all. This take practice, this take practice, this take practice. I self-record, I play it in my ear. I learn it like you learn the Lord's Prayer in the Bible. That's how you have to do it. Thank you, man. Any questions, any questions? We are going to ask some questions in a couple of minutes, but I want to engage Ms. Key in the ward. So we've talked about pitching your business and talking about your business, but I want to hear specifically, because I know you train entrepreneurs, about systems and processes. Absolutely. So I am a back-end specialist. I believe that it is really good to get the client, but what do you do when you get them? Mm -hmm. How do you build that relationship? How do you continue that rapport over time? If clients are not one-hit wonders. Those clients that come to you the first time are repeat clients, but think about it. Your best friend, how did that develop? You didn't say, hey, how you doing? What's your name, Keandra? Okay, good. And never called her again, right? Mm -hmm. How did they become your best friend? You built a rapport. Mm -hmm. And that rapport begins with systems, it begins with cyclic patterns, it also is your email sequences, your funnels, um, Facebook Live, all of those things, most people don't understand that it's there that people are really getting to know you. Why? They're not with you live all the time. They're not always going to be on your live, but guess what? They're sitting at work on their phone and your email pops up. And what do you think they're doing? They're reading. They're getting to know you. And you have to be vulnerable enough 
to share really who you are and what you've gone through and how you've developed the process of what you're doing so they can say, listen, you are just like me. Oh wait, look at where he is, look at where she is. I tell, my, they'll tell you, I tell every, y'all, I tell everything. Like, listen, <laughs> it was not a good day, but let me explain how I got out of that good day and it became a great day. And that's how you build rapport. So business is about building rapport. It is not a one sale. It is not two sales. It is continuously selling. Now, a sale does not always mean a financial transaction. A sale is now, Lindsay has now told Miss Sonia, hey, Keandra can help you with business. Guess what? That's a relational and transactional sale that will come to me financially. that is important what she's talking about and I can tell you probably the two major things that most minority business are missing and it's foundation right the foundational work business plans Absolutely. making stuff solid that's the first part because we can create and we can generate things and generate a little bit of money and right after you do the foundation and you do your uh, creation part the next thing that you're gonna be missing to grow is what she's talking about which is systems in place yeah. right right now um, I have a coach the coach have a coach my coach is on a six-week vacation just to show us my systems run and generate more money Absolutely. without me. Your system can run when you get it right, when you get your funnels right, when you get your classes right. Your systems can grow and generate money without you. And another thing, and even though Lindsay and both of us, you probably see us going live more or doing more videos, people need to hear from you. Yeah. So in the process, we learn people want to hear you. They want to hear your voice, yeah. right? Yeah. You wouldn't know who I was if I didn't teach you a class, if I wasn't up here right now, right? Mm -hmm. And so the thing that we run away from, just do it. Get online and talk to people and let them know who you are. If one person show up, if 10 people show up, right? If 100 people show up. Because I can tell you right now, it's not in the numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah, 10 people right. can be your best right. customers. You can have 100 people. You only need one. That's right. You really only, yeah, you really only need one good. That's the truth, and they can keep you going. So I really want you to stop it. If you don't have the best life right now, if you don't have the best phone, use what you got. I got like a $9.99 look. Stand up over there, get that 999 stand, work it with your light, and let's go, let's get in. Because these dollars out here, you gotta go get these coins. Guys. I have a small testimony from Matt. The other day, yesterday, I got a text message from one of our high level clients. And she said, I am so sorry. She had an event on Saturday, she, last Saturday. She said, I didn't pay my invoice and I got my, my gentle reminder from you and I know I'm so sorry and I paid the invoice, but I wanted you to know. Now, I didn't even realize the invoice had not been paid. Let me say that. And two, it was not me at, a system, at, at the computer clicking or texting her or saying it. It was our system that generates a reminder at a time that said, hey, this is just a small reminder that your invoice hadn't been paid. And she happened to be stand, sitting at her desk at her other job. Um, and she said, oh, let me pay it real quick. And then she texted me thinking it was me. And so I said, see, this is what we'll be developing for you. That wasn't even me. I'm actually not here. I'm out of town. I didn't even realize it had not been paid. Had you not inboxed me, I wouldn't have known. Wow. That's good. So we want to ask, see if anyone in the room has questions again. We already know from kind of the preliminary here that both of these ladies have tons of business wisdom. So for those of you in the room, does anybody have any quick questions around pitching or business systems and structure? Come on, well, we don't have the passion of mic, brother. Uh, Javon, do you mind passing the mic? I don't need a mic. I got a big mouth. Um, Teresa, ma'am, for those who, because uh, you have a little accent, just a little, little twang, mm -hmm. she wasn't saying ass. <laughs> ask, right? Ask. And I would like for you to to just delve on that a little bit about what that ask looks like. Okay, in business. Really quick, I'm so I'm so sorry. Oh, Pass that up because we want to get the audio. In business, when you're asking for something, um, Lindsay said it earlier, and a couple of other speakers, you have to be strategic. Now, these ladies have been talking about doing videos, streaming, going live. You may not have the current up-to-date technology to do that. So you know you need technology. So when you're asking, you need to do the research on how much that technology is gonna cost. So when you do your ask, you say, okay, for instance, this peer apprenticeship project I'm working on with the state. I need technology to create the onboarding process 
for ex-offenders, something that I'm doing to do a partner to, for them to do mentorship with small business owners. So I need an onboarding technology system streamlined based that I'm not, or Kendra say, I'm not sitting there at the computer. So it's going to cost me about $100,000 to get the system and two software, some software engineers to build it, what I envision. So in your, my ass, I'm asking, I need $10,000, dollars for technology to, and software engineers to create this platform for me. The more specific you are to tell them what you're going to do with the money, it will guarantee you getting the money or even more than what you asked for. Mm, thank you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You have to be specific. If you need um, to hire personnel, I need to increase my operational budget because I need to hire more people. What you gonna hire them? You got to pay for them to get training. You got to pay for them to get soft. You got to bring somebody in the training. You got to bring so you got to add that day salary in your budget. You got to have a bookkeeper to help pay them. So you gonna pitch? I need to bring aboard some more staff. I'm gonna need two hundred and fifty thousand dollars at least first year to be able to pay the people. Now don't ask too little, and then three months later you got to let the folk go because you ain't asked for enough money. So that's why you got to do your homework. I always tell people, ask more than what you need and not ask enough and then you're short. Yeah. And then you're gonna lose your health, you're gonna lose everything that you're trying to build on the dream. Currently, I'm working with a local bishop that's getting ready to do this $10 million construction project. I'm teaching him how to pitch to all his investors. He has a following, a big following. Let me give you a picture of picture. He's over 24 churches in his district. But when it comes to pitching, it's like he frees up like a six-year-old. I'm like, Bishop, I mean, you peach behind the pulpit every Sunday. What you, what you? I can't talk to them in the language you're talking, Teresa. So I prayed about it. I said, God, I'm not a member. This ain't my church. This is his vision. You know, I can't be his mouthpiece. But the Lord said, ask him, is he okay with you pitching his idea wow. and he sit on the stage so if they got questions, they can ask him. Wow. So when I presented it to him, y'all know what he said, right? He just got to jump through the phone. Yes, yes, you can do it, yes. So I'm getting ready to do an investor launch in about two weeks. And I got the pitch to get him $10 million for his construction project. And that's the biggest pitch competition I'll be doing. So I'm just as nervous and I'm not the bishop. So I'm not the bishop. So you have to be strategic. Do your research. Lindsay said it earlier. Know your industry. Consider inflation, because prices goes up. Do not include your nine to five money in that budget. You should have your own salary separate for your business. So be specific. Does that answer your question? Yes. yes. All right. Okay, so we only have a few minutes, but I'm gonna help you guys do your first pitch. I talked about it in my class. If you have a Facebook cover, raise your hand. Does your Facebook cover tell people what you do? Mm -hmm. See, it's a room full of people right now. Your first pitch is your cover. It's free. Under your cover is a spot where your name goes, right? Mm -hmm. Your name is Lauren da 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 da. You do real estate and investment under, right? You do uh, hair, nails, and makeup. Mm -hmm. I'm a mover, a, a makeup artist. That's your first spot. Your social media is free. So you missing that spot right there. So I'm trying to tell people, I try to teach people on a zero to no budget at first, but you gotta get up and get stuff in it. It's, it's right here, it's, it's plenty of information right on YouTube for it, right? It's plenty of coaches giving away information, talking every day. You have to take that five or 10 minutes out mm -hmm. to learn the information. But ground one is getting that social media up and getting it running right, right? Instagram, hitting all those spots. Sometimes it's a copy paste. To the next one, get all your social medias in a row. You don't even know who your target audience is, which social media platform is right for you yet, mm -hmm. right? That's ground one. So um, it's really, I would say, it's a lot of moving parts to this, but you gotta hit that base level first. And then you're ready to pitch on the next level, right? Yeah. So, um, I think we have one more question really quick. Okay, my question is, uh, the, I'm an author, what I want to, and writer, what I want to do is write, and hand everything else everywhere else, you know. But being a new author, until it pops off like that, then I just have I'm working on a zero to whatever budget. 
Um, how do you handle that where you got to manage all your pages of your social media, you got to start putting stuff in there, posting stuff, boosting it or whatever. Then you got to focus on writing. You got to focus on your family. You got to focus on your spiritual life. You got, you know, it's just like all of this. How do you, and there's no such thing as balance. I don't care who says there is, there is no such thing as balance. <laughs> because something's going to be like this and something's going to be like this at all times. It's never going to be balanced. You ladies, all anybody who wants to answer that. No problem. I'll start. I'll say this. I um, am in ministry. I am my mother's caregiver and full-time caregiver. I have a 16-year-old. I run a business. Wow. I am an author and we have a business school, right? So one of the things that I had to do was first take a look at what I really have to do. Because there are some things that we, we do as entrepreneurs because we see everybody else doing it, but it doesn't work for your brand. Do you really need to be doing that? That's the first thing. The second thing is I have a cat. I am a hands-on calendar and online calendar, but I have a calendar. And on my calendar, I have to section out each day. Mondays are assigned to these three specific things as far as the main things that I do for that day. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is my off day. I may sleep in, I may get up and work. It depends on the Friday. Now, what I do is I decide on Monday, so if Monday is my marketing day, that's when I am online pre-scheduling all of my social media. It is the time that I also deal with my team, and it is my money day. It's the time that I'm looking at my finances from the last week, making sure we're on. So those are the three things that I that I make sure that I do. Then everything else on my list, I do under that. Then the next day, I have two major things that I do. I'm, I'm writing. I'm a writer, so I do writing on Tuesdays. I don't know why Tuesdays is my writing day. It just is. I seem to flourish on Tuesdays. <laughs> so Tuesdays is my writing day, so that is my content day. So I am writing content, I'm writing programs, I'm doing things like that. Thursdays and Friday, well Thursday, Wednesday night and Thursday are my full client days. And then we have student days. And so I've had to just map it out. Now, in between that, I determine during the time frame what I have to do for my mother and my daughter and I'll make the necessary adjustments. When it comes to business and it being your business, you're going to have to, to schedule it out and you're going to have to make those necessary changes because if you are going to the corporate world, you are there at 9 o'clock. Yeah. So guess what time my business starts? I am not a 9 o'clock person. I'm not 8. I'm not a 7. I start at 10 o'clock and I do that very well. <laughs> I am in the office at 10 a.m. and I am fully dressed when I go into the office. I do not, I work from home, so I don't do, I don't go in the office with my pajamas on. I go in the office fully dressed. I go as if I am going into anyone's corporate office because if I treat my business like a business, it's going to react like a business. Wow, that's good. That's good. She gave some really good tips. The only thing I'll add, well, two things really quick. I read a book years ago, Time Management. Me and her actually have a similar, we got we have a, a coach in common, that's why. So I read, back up how I do things. I have days for specific things as well. That's Cheryl Wood. Yeah. Yes. But I want to say, eat that frog. I read that book many years ago. I think it's Brian Tracy wrote that book. Uh, again, it's Eat That Frog. It's about time management time management, when you start expanding your life and you're leveling up, you have to learn how to manage all of the new stuff that's happening in your life. So that's a great book. Second thing I will just add to it, again, separate from finding different days to do different things, you know, really look at what you enjoy doing in that process. You name the book process, you name writing, you name social media. You know, if social media is something you want to outsource. So consider what part of the process you can hand over to somebody else. And you don't have to, it doesn't mean you have to make an investment and pay somebody to do every part of it. Maybe you pay people to do the thing that you hate doing, just so that you can, you know, kind of invite joy back into your life. I think that is all of our time for today's episode. We need to wrap things up, but it was engaging. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Your Talk Time TV with Lindsay Bivens. And Sonia Pelton Sam show that brings together real people with real issues and comes up with real winning strategies and solutions. Make sure you check out our Facebook page. Yes, Your Talk Time TV. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, guys. We stumbled through that. Thank you again, Mr. Andrew Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Prayerfully, the edited version will look a lot better. <laughs> so,
we are going to transition and take a quick break, 15 minutes, guys, just to give you the opportunity to walk around.